Mm, I see. On the fifth and then the first, okay. Eighteen, nineteen, The most logical to the sentence.
15, let's see. Oh, I put it for a little bit. Terrible quality. Where's that one? Sinister, surly. Usually these are, well, oh, I see. Clubs are relying even tremendous. Ah, I see, I see. Such regulations. but also helping. Hmm. 
Where are you? Hey man, how you doing? Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> hey man, can you hear me? Hey, Aaron. Hi. How's everything? Good. Yeah, I know it's been a while, but um, did you get a chance to look at seven and eight or six and seven? Um, I did six. I just forgot to send it. Okay, that's fine. Actually, um, I was thinking because like since it's almost November, we, we might as well. This is my plan. Like, uh, let me know if you think this is good because I wanted to cover math, no mm -hmm. calc, and with calc, uh, maybe for like a whole month or maybe three weeks. Mm-hmm. So what we'll do today, like kind of similar to, you know, just going over the, these practice uh, concepts for grammar and then um, today and Sunday, and then on the fifth onwards to like maybe the third week, we'll circle back um, and we'll do math and we'll circle back to grammar just so that it's fresh in your mind. Yeah. And I think for reading, we'll probably just do like one day or two days of reading and, and then try to, um, you know, maybe like for homework, I'm gonna give you the rest of them because there's only like two more for grammar seven and eight. So I'll, I'll give you those already uh, after this. And then um, maybe preview like the math uh, section number three. So section three, we'll cover that first and then maybe like section four as okay. well. So three and four, uh, we'll touch on those like throughout the whole entire month of November. Cool. Yeah. All right, so um, for this, uh, I'm just gonna like, you know, we'll do what we usually do. I think it's good to just like go over some of these like problems. I think you've already done this before. We just didn't finish all the way. Uh, so this one is pretty much number three. Did, did you finish homework three by chance? Homework three? Yeah, it should, um, it, it's a while back, but um, it was, uh, it should be like SAT prep session three. Anyways, I, it doesn't matter if you can, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is like what we, what you probably did already. I just wanted to go over it again. It's always good to do that. So we did up to 11. So let's do number 12. Um, so for this one, uh, let me know what you would do with this guy, the underline. Um, 
no change. Yeah, that's right. And I kind of just underlined settlers here because it uh, this plural pronoun uh, themselves is should correspond to the noun. So the, you know, the settlers is the noun. And if you did like um, himself, it wouldn't make sense. And themselves, that's really bad grammar. I usually themselves, and then oneself is not the right um, uh, uh, correspondence to like a plural pronoun or a plural noun. So yeah, no change would be the right answer. Okay, what about thirteen? It's this guy. Mm -hmm. C. C. Okay. Yeah, this is correct. Um, how come you picked that one? Um, cause it sets up the rest of the thing. Like it's talking about how he like made a, his own like restaurant thingy, and that leads best into that because it's talking about like how there wasn't good food. Yeah. So the well for this guy, the reason why it's the answer because um it creates a transition from the previous sentence to, you know, this is rhetorical again, and to like the remainder of the sentences um, of the paragraph. And then, but then uh, if you do A, B, or C, uh, it wouldn't make sense. Uh, there's bad transition. And you, you've done this before. Every time there's a rhetorical, you always look at the previous and then the subsequent sentences and whether, you know, having that uh, sentence there or, and then looking also at the grammar is the sentence itself, um, good grammar, or else then you would have to change it. So yeah, the answer is C. Let's take a look at number 14. And it's this guy. D. Okay, so just to explain this one, uh, you know, this is like a lot of times uh, when you take a look at the sentence, I guess we'll, we'll plug in the one that we've picked because um, it's also within the same sentence. It says, to capitalize on the demand for good food, and there's a comma, Fred Harvey, and then a comma again, because it's a, a positive, it, you know, it, it kind of modifies this verb, Fred Harvey, or this noun, Fred Harvey. It tells more about it, like an English-born entrepreneur, but then it just ends it there, right? There's a period there. So that's not uh, a sentence. So like, so that's why it wouldn't be A. Um, and if you take a look at these other ones, uh, if you do like a colon, the one be before it uh, needs to be an independent. So it can't be the sentence. It, this guy right here is um, independent. And if you take a look at this as well, uh, you can't do that because it's dependent uh, for both sides of a semicolon. So, but this guy, it can work because um, you're just introducing this, uh, an, an English born entrepreneur and then you comma it. And the other check for it is if you take out this an English born entrepreneur, Fred Harvey and decided to open his own restaurant business to serve real customers should still make sense. Yeah, so it is D. Okay. And then, okay, 15. It's this guy. Um, B. B, okay. How come? Um, because the Harvey houses is plural. Yeah, so this is again, uh, this is because of the verb and a not pronoun or noun agreement. Uh, so when you look at, like, these are the simple ones. When you look, take a look at the was unique, were unique. So it can't be was unique, so that one's out. And let's take a look at the rest of them. So for there and for its. So you know, you're, you're already saying this is a plural, like were unique, were, and you're now saying for it, so there's no agreement there. So when you're saying for were unique, the houses, and then for there, so there matches uh, with were. So this is the one. All right, 16. This one's a little bit uh, a vocabulary thing. It, a lot of times, um, this doesn't really come up, but um, yeah, like few 
a few times it does where you have to compare the words. So. And I, I kind of added this guy. This is what you have to take a look at if you need to check like what word to use. Which is right here. Um, C. Okay, so how come not? Uh, let's take a look at A first. How come not A? Um, it's too like harsh. Of, it doesn't really like capture what he's trying to say. It's not like evil, which is like similar to sinister. Yeah. So this uh, this you know, the sinister and surly, the fair travelers were accustomed to receiving. So this one, uh, let's see, the menu was modeled after those. Uh, so the food was the was leagues beyond the the sinister fair travelers beyond the the abysmal fair, fair travelers were accustomed to okay so these two uh they're not the right uh words to describe the this the terrible quality of the food typically this is like describing like people um and then but like icky for example icky this is informal as well so this one's already out and then the reason why it's abysmal is um, you have to really weigh in because it could be A, B, or C, right? but you have to weigh in like which one matches with the, this food, the terrible quality that they're talking about. And for the most part, abysmal is the one that's typically used. That's not like, you know, beyond, like if you put it in here, was leagues beyond the abysmal fare. Travelers were accustomed to re receiving in transit. So yeah, uh, for this, I, I would just, uh, if you didn't know what surly was, um, that's kind of similar to sinister. So it can't be those two. But then once you pick like abysmal, abysmal is the one that's um, the one to use here because it matches perfectly with with this food and terrible quality of the food. So yes, yeah, um, I think having uh, you know sinister there is also one, the reason why it's not that is because it's just too extreme to describe it. So abysmal would be like your perfect. I guess midline, and at the same time, it describes the quality of the food um, better than the other ones. Yeah, this one is a little bit like qualitative. Uh, can't say anything more, but just kind of like uh, convince yourself that that's the word that you need to choose. All right, 17. Um, C. Yep, this is an easy one. Uh, so if you take a look at like what it wants you to do, it says it wants you to delete this first guy right here, right? So if you delete it, uh, it, it won't make sense because then you're already saying although here. Um, for the most part, you want something that, um, that starts out with kind of like explaining the full uh, dimension of the paragraph and and then it, when you, you know, when you delete it, it says there, yes, it, because it introduced information that is irrelevant, which is wrong, right? Um, it is relevant. And then this one here, it does not logically follow from the previous. So another time, uh, you know, if you want to check that, you could always look back at, at the previous paragraph because the first sentence is always the transitional sentence and see if it fits the, um, the flow from the previous paragraph to like this paragraph. And so it's not this one. Uh, because it does do that. And then, so now you're left with this, right? Um, it's going to be one of these guys. So let's take a look at D. So this one says, because it provides specific example in support of arguments made elsewhere in the passage. So for the most part, the, uh, the beginning of the sentence doesn't really provide like an example. Um, so it can't be this one, but this one I think sounds better. It provides a logical introduction to the paragraph. 
And we've already established that it's a good flow and the placement of it being in the first sentence um, does in fact say that it is an introduction. So let's see. All right, let's look at 18. And this one doesn't have like a prompt, um, but it just wants you to change what's underlined here. B. B? Yeah. How come? Um, Because the other ones are redundant. Okay, yeah, so that's why I did put this here. So if you look at, it's like, you might as well look at it. So the, the for no change, response to the advertisement was overwhelming and um, overwhelming, even tremendous. Something like this, like just, it seems like it's something you would say, like, you know, in the normal talking colloquial language, but you don't write it like this. You never write it like this, you know, like overwhelming, even tremendous. Even the punctuation itself is bad. And then saying those two things, they're pretty much the same word. So it wouldn't be this guy. And then, so looking at that and now comparing the other sentences, it seems like this same, uh, uh, you know, phrase is found here and here, right? And then here and here. And the only one that doesn't have that is B. So, so another strategy would be to like, take a look at like, which one is the oddball? So since A, C, and D are quite similar, um, they're all, they can't all be right. Uh, so, they, but they can all be wrong though. So they're all wrong. And then the only one that, that does make sense at the same time, the grammar is correct is um, B. Okay, 19. Uh, yeah, this this is one that we usually I usually use a lot not not only but also D yep okay so like not only but also is usually you know like they agree with each other like whatever comes after not only agrees with but also the phrase after it so not only and then they have but also here so so like taking a look at what you would change um, here, they want you to change, but also helped. So let, let's see, I typically when you're doing like not only, but also uh, you have what, what you call like this um, uh, compound like sentence where you have a comma here. And when you have a comma there, um, you, that means that it's same as this guy. When you have like an, a subject like I went to the mall and ran and bought and bought you know things when there's an when there's no and there uh or when there's no comma here um th this i uh, subject it can be used with the one coming after it but if there is a comma there uh you need to re you need to reestablish the subject so i went to the mall and I bought, so this I, same with this guy, not only, so you have not only, and then you have, a, you know, some words uh, and then a comma, and then you have, but, you know, also, and a bunch of other things. So if you, if you take a look at this guy, um, not only were such regular, so you have this guy, right? Such regulations is the subject. And uh, so that's the subject. And then you're supposed to repeat that, uh, like after the but or a pronoun of it. So if you take a look at this, but also helping, the subject is gone, it's not there. Also helping, there's no but, so that's definitely wrong. And then this one as well, but also help. There's, it's kind of same as like, but also helping. So the subject is gone, uh, but here the subject is here, right? The pronoun, the pronoun is here. So that's the reason why you use that, you, you choose that one. All right, 20. Um, C. C, okay, how come? 
Um, because it relates to like the paragraph before and then that. What about A, B, and D though? Um, they're kind of off topic. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're good at these ones. So yeah, it is C. So like, yeah, for most part, uh, these rhetoric ones, as I said, uh, you have to look at the flow and see if, um, you know, these other ones, do they make sense? If they don't, then you can easily cross it out. Uh, for this one, isn't, it isn't that bad. Uh, we've seen ones where you have to take a look at the grammar and then as well as like the rhetoric. Okay, 21. And this one is, yeah, change the underline. D. D. Okay, how come? Um, because you have a dependent clause before and then a independent clause after, so you need a comma. Yep, yeah. So it can't be the the colon one because it's a the preceding is a dependent clause. And then this guy, uh, let me see. So living independently and demonstrating an intense work ethic, comma. The Harbor Girls became known as a transformative force in the American West. Yep. And then let, let's just like, you know, uh, check these other two. So it's, let's say um, living independent, kind of actually A is wrong as well, because um, since the previous is not uh, independent. So what about this guy? Uh, living independently and demonstrating an intense work ethic, comma. And then you said, and the Harvey has became it. You cannot do that because um, it's like the compound uh, se sentence. It's kind of similar to these two. You're, you're supposed to have a, like a, an independent before you do the compound or where you do the and. But if you do the um, dependent clause and then this guy an independent conjunctive, whatever conjunction, compare conjunction. And then uh, you're supposed to put a comma there. So this is D. We've done this a lot. All right, 22. Um, A. Okay. Let's check out these other ones. So it says, yes, because it serves as transitional point in the paragraph. Uh, this is not really a transition. It's more like an example. So it's not, it doesn't tell you, you know, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't relate to that guy. And let's look, take a look at these no ones. Uh, so it says no, because it should be placed earlier in the passage. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Uh, and then the next one is because it contradicts the main claim of the passage. No, uh, I think th this one, uh, you have to assess um, if it's contradictory. Not, nothing is um, in contrast. You're not, they're not using those, um, the words like although or whatnot. So it can't be this, can't be that. Or uh, hold up. It can't be this, it can't be that. And let, let's take a look at this one. It should be placed earlier in the passage. Let's see. I don't think you should do that one because um, it, it doesn't talk about, you know, these, uh, these different examples. And then the only one, I think, you know, when you can see that there's commas here, uh, you can already tell that this might be a list, right? Mm -hmm. So in your mind, you probably think it's like, oh, it's a list of examples. So and if you take a look at these other ones, uh, maybe C could work, but if you take a look at it, it doesn't talk about any examples. Like in, you know, in the beginning here, um, I think the best one would be A because uh, it provides the right flow. It's obviously after you talked about these, uh, the, the Harvey girls, and then it gives them, um, you know, it gives more uh, right, examples to how they were a big influence. Um, having to, you know, give supporting details about them. So, yep, it has to be this guy. All right.
now we're finally into the other one. So let's take a look at 23 up to 33. A. Okay. How come? Um, it, How come not these guys? Those ones like had bad flow. <laughs> okay. So yeah, like um, there's also redundancy. And then it's the flow. It, so like, yeah, for this one, for example, apples, apples. And then what else is there? Applied apples, apples, um, three to four times. And they're talking about... Um, and this other one been in the Austin because only length of the storage when applied to apples so three to four times. And let's take a look at this guy. So when applied to apples, one MCP length and storage are by three to four times. Okay, that's good so far. Allowing producers to sell their apples in the off season months after the apples have been harvested. Sounds about right. Yeah. The and then the one of the rules here too is um, if you don't need to put in like this dash if you can do uh commas um use those instead so and then what about this other one the only thing that's necessary when applied uh, by three to four times adding like wait, where is it uh adding this thing right here when like there's a comma and a comma right there in between like what is this by three to four times when applied to apples you, you can't you, sh you shouldn't interject apples and then buy that doesn't make sense so it's not that one. What about this guy? Months after apples have been harvested, producers are allowed to sell their apples um, in the off season because so right here, this is why it's not the one. Their apples, comma, in. So you can't interject and put a comma right there. So it's not this one. So yeah, just by pro that process and this kind of, kind of like, you know, because it's the first one, uh, it seems, it sounds like it's right, but just like looking at the, all the other ones, um, the answer is A. Okay, 24. And it's this guy. D. D, okay. Let's try to read it. So 1MC works by lifting a fruit's production of ethylene. Okay. And with no change, it is a chemical that causes fruit to ripen and eventually rot. Uh, when you put in, um, let me see. Uh, I learned it works with uh, of ethylene, a chemical that causes fruit to ripen and eventually rot. This is what we call a, a positive. So a positive. And this is just like uh, when you're trying to like modify the, uh, the subject. So the, so this right here, ethylene is the subject. And we usually when you just add in a positive after, which so there's a comma, it kind of just, you don't have to re-establish the, the, the pronoun or the subject again. So that's why this, it is, um, is not the, not good grammar. Because uh, when you have like a positive, you can just directly, because you already know that it's ethylene and then now you want to modify it. So you put a comma and then you introduce whatever modifier you want to like, uh, do with the ethylene. So let's try to look at the um, being. So it says ethylene um, being a chemical that causes fruit to ripen and eventually rot. Um, it doesn't need to, you know, like being is just a state or like, you know, like to be. Usually when, when you do that, um, it's not a good, like, what, what is it called? When you do that, when you're doing to be, it's an infinitive. So it's bad grammar when you put, even even it sounds bad when you say being a chemical. It doesn't have to be, it's already a, chem a chemical. And then this one right here is, um, that is, let's, let's see how it sounds. Ethylene, that is a chemical that causes fruit to ripen and eventually rot. I remember talking about like when you put 
that uh when you put that and then this is like the subject and then you have this like modifier stuff here when you put that you don't actually need a comma here but since there is a comma um it wouldn't be this one and plus at the same time when you're saying that is a chemical it sounds kind of awkward so it I wouldn't do this. So there, and so if you do delete it, let's see, or let's uh, hear how it sounds. Ethylene and then comma, a chemical that causes fruit to ripen and eventually rot. It sounds like a, the way you would write in a positive. So it would be that one. Okay, 25. So a lot of these are like grammar ones now. B. B, how come? Um, because it's one that like best fits like the description of apples. Okay, subject here is apples, and all of these words are adjectives. And adjectives just modifies the noun and describes it, or and then so you have to. I mean, it's just a bunch of adjectives that you know words that you have to like assess whether which one is correct. And if you put tight. Um, let me see. While one MCP keeps apples tight and crisp for months, uh, it doesn't seem like it's the word that you would use for that. Um, and then firm is it's another synonym for tight, but it seems like that's what you do. Uh, you know how to describe like a fruit usually, firm and crisp uh, sounds about right. So we'll take that into consideration. What about this guy? Stiff, um, stiff and crisp. Uh, it doesn't sound, uh, it's also another one like tight. Um, it's not something you would associate to describe a fruit. And same with this guy, taut and crips. So yeah, the uh, with, with these ones, I, uh, you just have to like, it's kind of similar, there's a second one like this, you know, with, with the other guy, uh, sinister and then certainly, you gotta just have to go with all the words and assess them and which one sounds right. The best way would be kind of like what um, what you would use, you know, like a lot of times these adjectives, if, if you do, what I typically do is like, I like to um, like read like narratives like this and then like see how different sentences are created. And with that uh, kind of like emulate, like what are the type of adjectives typically are used and associated with nouns. And it's definitely not stiff, taut or tight. So that's why it's firm. Okay, 26. And this is another thing, it's like verb, verb subject. A. Or pronoun, okay. A, yep, um, it's A uh, versus, let's take a look at the other ones. So let's say all limits, um, if it's A, their scent production. So, and if you say the there, there right here is the it's a possessive. So let's just write it here. This is a possessive pronoun. And not only that, but it's like a plural. Plural possessive pronoun. And let's find what it's modifying. So the, the subject that it's modifying is apples. It's the same thing. It's the same sentence as the previous. So the subject here is the apples. And it's a plural. It's a plural subject. So that, that gives you a lot of hints. It can't be it's. It can't be this guy, because that's not a possessive. That's just a construction or constructive. And so this one always comes up a lot. Their their e r i r versus their um, r e. What's the difference? So this is the possessive one. This r e is like a preposition. It's like a it locates right over there. So it's not this because it's not possessive. Right, from the context, it does look like it's a possessive verb or possessive. Uh, pronoun and it's plural as well so that's why it's a okay 27 and this is kind of similar Um, 
D. D. Okay. So I remember talking about this before. This is like you know um, non-essential versus essential. And since you, if you remember, uh, like if you have a comma here, uh, let's see. Let, let's actually where does it say so? So this can be a problem with consumers and then comma that will reject apples lacking the expected aroma. Since you have a comma there, uh, you can't just, you can't have that. So, Cause when you have that, usually the comma is, is gone. You don't want, but since you need to have a comma there, you can't be this guy. And uh, so it's either which or who actually, uh, cause this day, let's see why it's not they. So it says here that um, this can be a problem with consumers and then they will reject apples lacking the expected aroma. So this is they will reject. So that's not a good way to introduce the, um, this modifier. So when you put in they, usually it's like who, which, um, and then that, uh, not they. So it's not this guy, since everything that comes after this comma is a, a modifier of consumers. And let's just say, let's see if it's which or who. So when you say, when, let's add in which there. So consumers comma, which will reject apples lacking the expected aroma. So which versus who, which is usually used um, if it's not, if it's like a non, non-person. So who or whom, um, th this is like a person thing. And consumers is a pair, you know, it's a person subject. So I wouldn't use uh, which uh, because of that reason. And that because there's no, there is a comma that we need to keep. Uh, and then they, because that's not one of the, you know, the opening words that you have to use when there's like a modifier there. And then, so that leaves us with who. And then let's see if it works in context. This can be a problem with consumers who matches with consumers will reject apples lacking the expected aroma. Sounds about right. And it's also grammatically correct. Okay, what about 28? Um, B. B, okay, how come? Cause they use do before. This guy, good. And so that matches that guy, right? It's just a verb agreement or verb mm -hmm. flow, verb tense flow. So, okay. And then this one did, obviously that's in the past tense. And then have, uh, not that guy, not, okay. So this is an easy one. All right, 29. Oh, that's weird. So this is 29. This is 30. Well, this, the answer for this is a little bit. I mean, I think, uh, um, C. See, like this one, uh, it seems, this is a tough one actually, because I remember talking about this, uh, the colon one, right? Mm -hmm. So the colon one, this is actually the answer. Like the colon one gives you, this is supposed to be an independent clause before it, right? And then here it can be dependent or independent. But uh, in this case, I, I have to like challenge this one because they're saying it's this guy. But like, if you take a look at C, because I'll take Barrett Pierce, for instance, unless there, sounds like that's the right one, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, so it may, it may be C, because that's what I usually use when I'm writing things down as well. And then it can't be, it can't be A, because um, you're, you're putting this in the middle, which doesn't make sense, or like commas. Can't be D, because when you read this, take Barrett Pierce, that's a, that's a dependent clause, and it's a fragment. Um, the, there's no uh, there's no predicate, and so it's either B or C, but 
apparently B is the answer. Um, so I don't know why it's either one of these two. Uh, I would just say when you're introducing, because usually when you introduce a, you know, like a, a, a list that comes after, I think it's a, kind of like a thought, a sequential thought. And this kind of sounds like a sequential thought. Uh, you usually use a colon. Maybe that's the reason why they use B. So yeah, um, just to explain that one, if you were to use like B uh, for the exam, if you see a list of sequential things um, after the colon, uh, just use that one, even though it seems like it doesn't match with this rule. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But on all other cases, use this rule because this is the one that, that always works. Maybe like 99.9%. Mm -hmm. All right, thir 30. Ah, uh, okay. Sentence four, okay. I guess they're talking about this guy. Do you, do you have this one or do you need to see? Um, no, I don't. Because it was... okay. okay. Can you see the the words? Even if it's like this small. Um. Slightly. Yeah. Can you see it? <laughs> that should be fine. Okay, they're, they're talking about four, so. And then if you need to see the choices, it's um, no change after sentence one, after sentence two, after sentence five. Okay, this one actually is not that bad. Just take a look at like the contrast. After sentence one. After sentence one. Uh, so like, if you look at sentence four, it's talking about b these fruits do not respond well, right? To this like one MCP thing. Mm -hmm. And if you look at like um, sentence, try, try to take a look at sentence two. Well, M one MCP keeps apples, th this word right here, uh, what was it? Like firm and crips for months. It also limits their scent production. Uh, so let's see. After sentence, oh, you did you did say after sentence one, right? Yeah. yeah. It's actually yeah, that's correct. Because um, it this guy right here introduces a a contrast, and then this also introduces a contrast, and one is is the opposite of that. Uh, works by limiting a fruit and it's going to cause fruit to ripen. Yeah, works by limiting fruit to. Um, yeah, so it has to be that one. It's after sentence one, and a sentence two is just um, it's a, it's just a support of sentence of um, sentence four, and sentence five. Uh, if you take a, it's way too far off. You're already concluding, so I wouldn't do that one. Um, where it is now is, I don't think it's like the right place. It's either because of just uh, the previous sentence. Yeah, because of the previous sentence. So sentence four is um, um, very similar to sentence two. They have the same vein, but they're opposite sentence uh, one.
All right. Let's look at 31. Mm, okay. Um, B. B as in boy? Actually, D. Okay, good. Yeah, that's the answer. The reason why is, um, let me see. So B and C, looks like it's like an upward increasing, right? It, it looks like an increasing. And then th this guy right here is like, kind of like that, decreasing. So let's take a look at, uh, like, this one itself as well is saying uh, less browning. So kind of, so let's take a look at if it's roughly 5%, something not as much substantially, which is a lot of decreasing. And where can we prod that one? Let's see. Um, it's obviously the previous sentences. So finally, I found that actually increases it to some pathology. For example, it's a condition that causes the flesh of the, the apple to, um, to turn brown. So I'll show you the apple producers have dealt with this problem by leaving apples in the open for three weeks before storing them. Uh, as the graph shows, um, too bad there's no actual graph. <laughs> the flesh, um, let's see, uh, the flesh of the untreated environment are first stored in open air. Goes, the flesh of untreated apples are immediately put in circle. Our untreated, uh, first stored. So. You can't really prove, uh, let me see. So it has to do with this one right here. That would probably leave it up in the oven for three weeks before storing them. In a, so you have to kind of infer from this of so three weeks before storing them, right? Mm -hmm. And then the problem here is the browning. So it seems like this is a more than a big deal. So this, this is like more than the usual. So when you're saying roughly 5%, um, it's it, the tone of that phrase is saying like, oh, less, or like not too uh, roughly, it's, you know, when you say something roughly is a, uh, it's moderate, but it's not um, in direct correlation with what they're saying here that I have underlined. So it can't be A, can't be B and C, we already established that. So it has to be D because it's a lot of like browning due to like the whatever you can infer from this sentence. All right, uh, let's do 32. And then we'll make this our last one, 32. B. D as in dog? Uh, B. B as in boy, okay. B, all right. Yep, that's the answer. How come? 
Um, it fits the graph best because the graph shows that they roughly like about fifty percent. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, that's the that's the answer. And then if you take a look at like C and D, let's just see what A, B, and C. C. So this one turns out when first starting open, not the though not under conditions. Seems like a repetitive thing, so that's not that one. And if you take a look at um, C, they're flash browns when they're put directly into controlled atmosphere, but when they are first stored in the open air. Uh, they're flash browns when they're put directly in the control, but when they are first stored, this doesn't make sense. Um, D, the flash turns brown when they are first stored in open, though not as quickly as the apple flash in the untreated group does. Again, um, it doesn't really relate back to um, what it's talking about in the paragraph. So, but when you take a look at this, B, uh, roughly half of their flesh turns brown, regardless of whether the apples are first stored in the open air. Yeah, it says it right here. So that's what I would, yeah, it would be B. Okay, so like for um, the next couple ones, uh, I would probably, uh, for Sunday, I'm gonna give you the rest of the, the grammar stuff. So, mm -hmm. Uh, there's like two more. I know you didn't give me, you didn't do seven, right? No, I didn't do seven yet. Yeah. If you can give me like seven, part two, and an eight and nine, um, try to do those if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do as much as you can. And then we'll cover uh, one more day of grammar. And, you know, it's kind of similar to this. Maybe I'll, I'll pick like number nine if you, get, you don't get to it. And um, for next week, Thursday, uh, Let's start covering back to like the prep number one, homework one, but like section three. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I may have already done eight and nine in the practice test. Oh, you've done those already? Yeah. I've done like 10, nine, and eight, I think. 10, nine, and eight? Yeah. Of the full practice test. Oh, so the, these ones, are, this one, you're talking about these ones, 10, nine, and eight, or just everything um like everything of practice test 10 practice test 9 and practice test 8 okay so can you send me those i just want to see okay yeah i can copy them down i did them online on like khan academy okay yeah that'll be good and did you do part three as well or um i think so okay uh what about one to like seven did you do like part three and four for all of them? Um, I think so. Just okay. for the seven, eight, and I mean, eight, nine, and 10. Wait, so the, you, you only did those or you didn't do those? No, so I've done all four parts for those three practice tests. Okay, okay, that's a good, that's good info actually. So one to seven, you didn't do those, right? No. Okay, we'll cover that, we'll cover one, to seven um, parts three and four, and I did give you part one, right? Uh, or like uh, homework one uh, a long ways back. So try try to see if you can like look at that again. Yeah. And just, but you don't you don't have to do it yet. We're gonna we're gonna cover uh, them one by one. So okay. we'll do that next week. But for now, just preview the sections three and four, and then give me the rest of. I guess if you already did it, just send that to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, we'll still cover them. I think it's good, yeah. you know, practice. Cool. Aaron, thanks, man. Thank you. Bye. Yep.